my entire nervous system went into a massive state of fight or flight. It took over my body. I couldn't breathe my way out of it. It was like a systemic overhaul. I imagine it feels very similar to a panic attack. The doctor kindly told me I'm just a tired mom of three and I should just go home and rest. I said, I'm not leaving your office unless you will write in the chart that you refused to test my blood. I needed to stand up for myself. I needed someone else to know that something was wrong. So we got my blood drawn. I had Lyme disease. And then we later found out that there was massive mold on our sailboat. Mold toxicity, mycotoxins, and metals are becoming increasingly more prevalent. So I picture any other woman who went in there that maybe doesn't know her body or doesn't know what labs to ask for probably would have gotten sent home. And what would have happened? Hey guys, welcome back to the Ultimate Human Podcast. I'm your host, uh, human biologist Gary Brecker, where we go down the road of everything anti-aging, biohacking, longevity, and everything in between. And as you know, I've been on this little mini mission, uh, thanks to Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. Shout out to her. Um, you know, I was on my Instagram um, one day, and I was actually looking at Dr. Gabrielle Lyon's Instagram, and she had um, an influencer guest of hers that made a very good point and said, hey, if you follow Gary Brecka and Huberman and some of these other podcasters that are doing great things out there in the world, um, they seem to have a heavy, heavy focus on men and, um, and you know, uh, male hormone therapy and, um, you know, male dominated um, audience and a lot of um, transitions between a lot of our, our male clients. And instead of taking that as an assault, I was like, you know what, she's right. And, you know, my, my, role and responsibility at The Ultimate Human is to give a voice to the best products, to give a voice to the best practitioners, and to push people up through the noise that are doing great things for humanity. And today's guest is going to absolutely do that. And ladies, listen up, because this podcast is going to be largely for you. Um, so welcome to the podcast, Dr. Melissa Saunders. Thank you so yeah, much. I'm so excited. That was such a great intro. I'm so glad you're you're giving more voice to feminine power on here. It's so important. Yeah. You know, I, I really try to listen to the audience. You know, when I, um, I had an interesting journey at the beginning of the Ult ultimate human podcast, I signed this deal with, um, a, a big talent agency. And I realized once we'd launched the podcast that, you know, I started getting all these ad reads for like energy drinks and CBD gummies and junk vitamins. And, you know, I told my, my crew, I was like, look, I'm not, I'm not reading any of these ads. Um, you know, this, I don't care if they, if I'm under contract or if they've paid for, for the platform space, um, you know, this is not in service to my mission. And part of my objective is to give a voice to the best products. You know, you'll find if you listen to the podcast, I'll shout out competitors all the time. Um, I don't consider them competitors. I consider us having the same mission and it really dawned on me that I had not just a male dominated audience, but I had male dominated um, guests on the podcast. I had a male dominated um, transitions, you know, most of the life changing, you know, Dana White, you know, Stephen A. Smith, all of these guys. And, um, you know, we looked at our stats and I have a large female audience. And so we got to give the ladies some love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And I love what you're doing. You know, you're coming from a place of integrity too. Thank you. Just in talking about your ads and in the age of information, there's so much free information out there that we have to you know, when you ha when we have these platforms where people are relying on us for great free information, we've yeah. got to come from a place of integrity and stay in our mission based hearts. I think that's so key. I love that you're doing that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it was uh, we had a little bit of a legal kerfuffle and I hired a great chief of staff. Um, this woman, Kemi Fisher, and she went in and negotiated us to buy the entire platform back. Wow. And now our our mission internally is that we will not do an ad read. Um, uh, for a product or service that I either don't use every day in my daily life or I don't have firsthand knowledge of. Mm. Um, and you've kind of seen around the place. You, it's like yeah. there's a graveyard of products tucked in the back <laughs> right corner, and then there's the ones that I really want to give a voice to. And you're, yeah. you're one of those practitioners that I want to give a voice to. Um, and I have this philosophy, and it's a big theme that runs through the ultimate human, that the people that are in the greatest service to humanity and – are, are those people that solved uh, an issue. They went through a real struggle mm -hmm. and their purpose came from their pain. So, so talk a little bit about your journey. Yeah, thank um, you. You know, my story is really powerful because 
it's really a universal story for every woman out there and probably for a lot of the men too. You can let me know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, my story is something that happened because I stopped taking care of myself. And as women, I know that's such a relatable thing. It's mm -hmm. like we put everybody and everything ahead of ourselves on our to-do list. And guys really do this too, you know? Yeah. In the mortality space, we called this caregiver syndrome. Mm -hmm. It was actually a real syndrome. Right. I mean, we know that when one spouse passes, especially after a really prolonged marriage, yeah. the next one is 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 quickly to follow. But in in smaller ways, we, we would factor in this this um, comorbidity that we called caregiver syndrome. Mm, so mm -hmm. um, so I didn't mean to cut you off, but oh, no, that's OK. That's OK. And, you know, I got really sick and I'm really excited to share the details of that because it's really powerful. And, you know, a lot of women might hear my story and and like dismiss it because they didn't get as sick as I got, or maybe right. they didn't get as tired or worn down as I got. But I will tell you that the choices that we make on a daily basis are either leading us towards sickness or health. You know, I mean, you talk about this all the time. And especially as women, natural caregivers, if we're not careful, maybe you won't find yourself as sick as I got, but you're probably headed pretty close to that, mm. right? And so in my story, what I had to do was create a strategy to make self-care easy. And I know we're going to get into that. Mm -hmm. But basically, you know, I'm a mom of three. Um, my husband How old? who's here. Yep, so husband's in the background here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now they're 13, 11, and 7. We have two boys and a little girl. 13, 11, 7. Okay. Yeah, you've got a good spread too. Yeah, I've got them got 25, 23, and 19. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you'll be so there soon. Little, yeah, I feel <laughs> like we're soon. in that golden age right yeah. now where like they still love us. They want to be with oh, us. Oh, they might still love me too. They, it, it, mm. I, I'll tell you, it just gets better and better and yeah, better. Yeah, that's how I feel. I mean, I, I talk about it all the time. Like, yeah. My kids are my best friends. They're my ride or die. Mm -hmm. They work with me full time. They're in school full time. Um, you know, they really just caught the bug. And it's a it's the greatest blessing in life. I, yeah. I, I really oh, I love that. I mean, that. our kids watch. They are involved in all of our business conversations. It's like we want them. They're a family. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I love to hear you say that because so many times as a mom, I've heard enjoy it because this is going to pass. And it's like it feels like you're trying to hold sand in your hand, right? Like yeah. I am enjoying it. And sometimes it's hard and it's not always enjoyable. Right. And then the mom guilt comes in. Well, you know, I, I, I actually uh, was listening to Peter Atia on a podcast. I think it was a human podcast that he was on. And he was talking about a statistic, which really just was eye popping to me. And he said, you get 19 years mm. um, as a parent with your children. The first 18 are when they live with you, when they're, when they're with you full time. The last year, is spread over the entirety of the rest of their life. Oh, wow. And I was like, how sad is that? And if yeah. I'm bastardizing that comment, I apologize. I, I should have probably gone back and made sure it was accurate. But it was something along those lines that the, that the last year was literally spread out, you know, amongst the balance of your life. I know, you're right? make me you're cry. Like, you want to get them in here? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the set, all of your kids. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so when our kids were little a few mm -hmm. years ago, we had a six-year-old, a four-year-old. The boys were six and four. They're pretty close in age. They're like 20 months apart. And our baby girl was a year old. And um, we have a sailboat, or we had a sailboat when we lived in New Jersey. I love seeing the sailboats out here. Right on. And we spent a lot of weekends on the water as a family, kind of like getting away from work and the office and just being together. And we were on the sailboat. Um, we spent the night on there. Our oldest son had a friend sleeping over. So we had four kids, six and under, with us in the middle of the water on a sailboat. And we're like getting ready. I'm tucking them all in. And all of a sudden, I basically, my my entire nervous system went into a massive state of fight or flight. Like wow. took over my body. I couldn't like breathe my way out of it. Like a panic attack. Like a panic Making attack. I, yeah, I would imagine. It just, it was like a systemic overhaul. I imagine it feels very similar to a panic attack, wow. which I had never had. I tried to have a glass of wine, which would normally calm, right. I would think. And it did the opposite. So, of course, being like a good woman <laughs> mm -hmm. that we put on ourselves to be that way, I didn't say a word to my husband and I stayed up all night trying to figure out what the hell was going on with my body. So the next morning I was like, Jay, there's something really wrong. Like my I could start to feel my vertebrae lock up one by one. Like I was getting really wow. stiff, massive headache. Um, I was like, something's not right. I don't feel good. He's like, how about you go home and rest? So you take the four kids home <laughs> and rest. 
I'm gonna Dude, meet, I, I'm, I love men. <laughs> male power right there. I'm going to meet my yeah. dad for a fishing trip. I was like, where can I get a big enough coffee that I can make this 45-minute drive home? He had no idea because I didn't. I minimized it, right? Okay. We're so good at doing that. There's 100,000 women looking for your husband right now. Yeah. He, <laughs> With he is forks. the best support. He had no idea because I was like, something's not right. And so if something is massively wrong, I need you to drive me home right now. And we do wow. that as women, right? Right. So fast forward, you know, we're back to the work week. Things are getting progressively worse. Our clinic, we have a beautiful uh, integrated wellness center in New Jersey. We had built it 15 years prior. It's two miles from our home. I spent nearly every day there. I was driving to the clinic and literally had to pull over. I was lost. Thank God I could remember wow. the address. I literally had to plug the address into my map to find my way to a place I had been every day for 15 years. Wow. So I knew. I was like, something is very wrong here. Um, I went to urgent care. Our phlebotomist wasn't in that day. So I got my labs. Well, I went to get my labs drawn. The doctor kindly told me I'm just a tired mom of three and I should just go home and rest. Mm. Oh, head. Yeah. And like, there's no way you're going home to rest as a mom of three. Yeah. So luckily being a practitioner, I'm a chiropractor, but at least I know the insides that I said, I'm not leaving your office unless you were right in the chart that you refused to test my blood. Like I needed to stand up for myself. I needed someone else to know that something was wrong. Right. So we got my blood drawn. I had Lyme disease. Mm. And then we later found out that there was massive mold on our sailboat. So that is what kicked me over. That was wow. like that final straw for me. We see a lot of mold and mycotoxin. Um, I heard on a po previous podcast guest of mine, a practitioner out of uh, Tampa told me that the mold capital um, of the world, if not of the United States, and I don't know if there's data to support this, is Miami and Malibu, California. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, crap, I live in Miami. But, you know, we see so many new patients a, a month in our in our clinic, but mold toxicity, mycotoxins, and, and metals are becoming increasingly more prevalent. Uh, maybe it's just that we're testing more for it, and, and a lot of these uh, chronic conditions, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, these sort of catch-all diagnoses, irritable bowel syndrome, these sort of spherical diagnoses that catch everything um, are probably a lot more mold and mycotoxin and metal related. Yeah. Um, and so you find out that you have Lyme. Yeah. Um, that was actually pretty, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that an urgent care would give you a Lyme titer test, or did you ask for that? I asked for that. Okay, I was gonna yeah. say, because normally they wouldn't have yeah. Any idea. That's where I said it was, you know, thank God that I knew. Because I picture any other woman who went in there that maybe doesn't know her body or doesn't know what labs to ask for probably would have gotten sent home. Right. And what would have happened? You know, you just continue to work yourself into the ground. Yeah. But at least you have an enemy now, right? Now you At least you know, I have got, an enemy. Yeah. yeah. And what I realized in the process, you know, I got really sick and I watched what happened to our family when I went down. So I had, I was the one taking care of our staff, right? I was managing our team, hiring our team. I was, obviously my husband plays a major role in our family, but I was also breastfeeding and co-sleeping. So like there was a lot of things that I had to do that I was struggling to get done. Mm -hmm. I had a full load of patients. So I watched my husband's stress increase as he watched me start to dwindle. Right. Right. And so in that process, well, we figured out how to get myself better, which thank God, once we knew it was Lyme and once we knew it was mold, we pivoted into all the tools that we have in the office, the hyperbaric the sauna, right. the red light. The and I want to talk about that because there are a lot mm -hmm. of people listening right now um, that may have it, don't know they have it, but mm -hmm. are going to identify with your story or have it and don't really know what to do because the conventional medicine doesn't offer a lot for mold mycotoxins. Yeah, we can definitely talk about yeah. that. And I also found, you know, what was really important to me, Gary, is that, you know, as a chiropractor, we're trained to look at the body, you know, as a, this incredible healing machine. And so it's basically stress that pushes us into disease or dysfunction. Right. So whether it's physical, chemical, or emotional stress, I, we see stress as like a bucket, our ability to manage stress as a bucket. Mm -hmm. So our stress accumulates, and when that bucket gets full and overflows, there's your symptoms, right? right. You, know, you know this, you talk about so these true. things all the time. So I had been pregnant, breastfeeding, and co-sleeping for seven years. So I was doing everything right in the physical world. I was doing my CrossFit workouts. I was fasting. I was living a low carb lifestyle. But my emotional stress had gotten so high 
that that mold, you know, you ask the question, like, are we seeing it more? Are we testing for it more? Has it always been in the environment? And maybe now we just can't handle it because our emotional stress is so high. It's great. I think that's a big piece of the puzzle. And as a woman, when we think about what can we do to address our emotional stress, that I think in the past has gotten really overwhelming to women because we think about self-care, a massage, these things that we have to like duck out and escape from our lives in order to incorporate. So I knew I needed to create a system, not only to help me, but to help women, that we could do self-care while we're driving our kids to school. Wow. We could do self-care as we're getting ready to hop in that room with that patient or on that Zoom meeting. And I think there's sometimes for a lot of women, there's a lot of guilt around self-care. They think they, they think self-care is selfish. Yeah. Right. They mm -hmm. think that putting themselves first is putting their kids or their husband or their career second. And I actually think the opposite. Right. I mean, I, it's, it's like the analogy of put your oxygen mask on before you even assist your own child. 100%. Right. I mean, because mm -hmm. if you pass out, you're going to be no good to your to your child. I mean, that's an extreme example of it. But um, I, I have a tendency to agree with you that, um, you know, m mental fitness, um, um, you know, emotional stress um, and self-care are kind of these things that nobody wants to talk about. Yeah, you know? uh, there's definitely a reframe that we need to have as women. And it's not selfish. And it's not about being selfless. Mm -hmm. Like, it's almost like we're taught as women and caregivers, oh, you're such a selfless person. Yeah. Mother Teresa is such a selfless person. Like, mm -hmm. that's such a good thing. Mother Teresa flew first class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did she? Like, I you love, have got that. to be able to take care of yourself. I love that because I'm a travel diva. Order, yeah. But yeah. In order to be able to take care of others. So, you know, the big thing that I came up with for women, and I would love to spend some time on this, is that we have got to be willing to spend time with ourselves. We have got to be willing to sit with ourselves because that's where true self-care starts. And this kind of self-care that we're going to talk about is free, it's easy, and you can access it at any time. Wow. But the, the tough thing when I talk to women about sitting with themselves is there's a few challenges that come up right out, right out the gate. Yeah. Is it okay if we yeah, go yeah, into let's, these? Yeah, let's okay. go. The, dude, my ladies are tuning in right now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. men listening to this, share this with your girlfriend or your girlfriends or your wife because she needs this message so badly. So, you know, when we, like women do not have access to sitting throughout the day mm -hmm. much of the time, and neither do men, right? Like this is not just a message for women. Right. And you think about one, how can we carve out that time? We're running around doing all the things in our jobs, with our family, all the things you guys are doing them as well. If we can actually find that five minutes in the morning or at the end of the day to finally sit down, if you tell someone to not do anything in that space, think about before you had your incredible breath work practice right, or a meditation practice and someone told you to sit and do nothing. Oh, it's the worst. I used to go to these guided meditation classes and it would drive me crazy. Because like I would lay down on the table yeah. in a dark room, the candles going, music's playing and the practitioner's like, there's a, there's a hallway. And at the end of the hallway, there's a light. And I'm like, well, <laughs> can we get to the end of the hallway? Because clearly something's there's going something on. There. <laughs> yeah, there's something going on down there. And there's not, there's not a damn thing going on where we are. So they're like, let me get to the, the spot. That's the point, Gary. Just <laughs> go with it. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't, I, can't, yeah. I can't do this. I want to get to the hallway where the light is. Yeah. But I know what you mean. So you sit in yeah. this, this space for five minutes. So if you tell someone to sit for five minutes, if I'm like, women, we know we need more nurture. We know, I mean, all day you're just like, I just want to sit. I just want to get to Friday and like sit on my couch and relax and catch my breath. Mm -hmm. But you go to sit and what do we do? These thoughts come up like, oh my God, what am I doing here? What's my to-do list? Uh, why am I sitting here? What is this supposed to feel like? Get on my phone. So maybe if we go deep enough, we start to feel some feelings. Maybe like, oh God, today was horrible. Or, oh my God. I didn't, I didn't run that meeting the way I should have, or it's like the shoulds, coulds, didn't, wouldn't. So what do we do? We distract ourselves out of it. What do we grab to distract ourselves out of that feeling of sitting? If you're sitting and you're doing something and it's not being internal, what is it? It's grabbing your phone, right? Mm -hmm. So we grab our phone and it distracts us out of that moment, but it also pulls us into more of like the shoulds, the not good enoughs, right? We're either scrolling social media, we're scrolling our emails, maybe we're meal planning, we're doing all the things. right? So in my mind, what I like to encourage women to do is to have a gateway tool to help us sit. And okay. it's a book. Mm. So what if instead of picking up your phone, which is a negative habit, instead of just not picking it up, you replace that negative habit with a positive habit. So you're not just not picking up your phone, but you're picking up a book instead. Okay. And what if you're picking up a book like 
Michael Singer, Untethered Soul. I don't know if you've read that book, but it's incredible. In that book, he talks about becoming the observer in our life, right? This is really powerful stuff because as women, we have gotten to a place of fearing these like dark shadowy emotions, right? Right. If I feel angry, that's bad. If I feel sad, I got to get myself out of it. Right. Right. And so what we can do in becoming the observer is create distance from these thoughts. Mm. It's not about not feeling them, but it's almost like if you have a girlfriend that's going through something uh, like very emotional, you can meet that girlfriend and give her advice because you're on the outside and you're not like feeling it as much. Right. You can rationally work through that problem. Right. When it's ourself and we're like lost in the emotion or trying to distract ourselves out of it, it's like we lose the insight that's in that feeling. Right. So when we can become this observer, we can start to ask ourselves questions about these emotions what is it about this situation that's making me feel so angry? Guys, if you've been watching the Ultimate Human Podcast for any length of time, you know that one thing I do not do is push products. I do not just let any advertiser into this space because I believe that the products that appear on the Ultimate Human Podcast should be things that I use every day in my life to improve my own physiology. One of them is something called the Echo Go Plus. The Echo Go Plus is a hydrogen water generator that you can take on the go. You essentially take the top off of this bottle you pour bottled water in this and repeatedly it will make high part per million hydrogen water. You press this little button, you'll see these bubbles going up in the water. That's hydrogen being created in the water. There are all kinds of peer-reviewed published clinical studies on the benefits of hydrogen water, including reduced inflammation, better absorption of your supplements, better absorption of your foods, better balance of the stomach acid, and it feeds an entire class of bacteria in your gut. Hydrogen water in my opinion is the most beneficial water that you can drink and now you can take it wherever you go you can go to echo e-c-h-o h2o dot com that's echo e-c-h-o h2o dot com enter the code ultimate 10 for a discount echo h2o enter the code ultimate 10 for a discount why am i sad about what just happened why am i feeling jealous or guilt and from there, we can get these really powerful insights into what we want or don't want in our lives rather than just continuing to do what we do and like stuffing these feelings in the closet. Right. These are powerful emotions. Right. And I want to talk about some of that when we and talk about. And so you're saying they should start with five minutes at a time, just say either in the morning or when they get the kids home and just find a place for five minutes Um could you make some book recommendations? Maybe I'll, I'll even throw them in the show notes. Yeah. Um, that The first one being one of them. Um, and just start with this five minutes of self-care. That's your first. Uh, there's two so, things okay. I would say. So one is having a book with you wherever you go. And mm -hmm. I actually started because I wanted to help women do this. I created a free online community. We have okay. a women's book club. Okay. Where each month I recommend a book that helps empower us. And then in our meetings, we apply the concepts in that book to our lives as women. So I know we'll link that below. They can join my book club. Sure, that'd be they great. They can even just look at my recommended book list. But yes, have a book. Okay. I even brought my book in my bag here. Perfect. Because gonna... you never know when you'll have that five minutes. Like if I get to school pick up five minutes early, mm -hmm. I can either grab my phone or I can grab a book. Mm. Right? So it's making that choice. It's like when people are making lifestyle and diet changes, health coaches will say the battle isn't won or lost at the mealtime. It's won or lost at the grocery store. Right? Right? So true. So for women, in creating this five minutes, everyone can carve out five minutes a day to nurture, mm -hmm. the battle is won or lost when you put down your phone and you pick up a book. And I think that, you know, I, I like this habit because it's, you know, it's a five-minute commitment. Um, and I think what ends up happening is um, you start to derive so much insight and joy from that that it becomes a 15-minute habit, becomes a 30-minute habit. And... The phone fades and the and self care starts to take the stage. Yeah, right? absolutely. Because you know we're dopamine addicted, and so we easily get dopamine so hits from our phone, but it doesn't feel good after. Right. Right. So when we can just put that down, grab the grab the book, win the battle right there, you're going to get so many feel good chemicals. Mm. And then to your point, you're going to anchor into that feeling next time you get to make right. a decision. And so you know instead of. Um, wasting time or diverting attention to a fiction novel, which is yes. just sort of just filling the space. Mm -hmm. um, you're saying fill the space with something that's gonna give you, 
bring you some meaning. That's going to help you um, tune in. Yep. So like Untethered Soul by Mar Michael Singer is a book that we read in our book club. Um, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's got oh some God, incredible love books. Him. Yeah. Right now we're reading Atomic Habits by Breaking James Breaking the Habit Clear. of Being Yourself. <laughs> That's a great title. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm a big fan of Joe Dispenza. Yeah. Um, and what was the last one that you said? Uh, we're doing Atomic Habits right now by Atomic James Habits. Clear. So, you know, talking about a five minute habit switch. So another yeah. thing I'm doing is I'm taking women through a 31 day challenge. Give me 20 minutes with you in the morning or if you want, start with 10 and each day they're getting an email that here's why we do this, right? right. Here's what it's going to do to your nervous system. And this is how it's going to translate into your life today. Yeah, I love that. There's an inspirational quote and then there's a journal prompt. Okay. So I have them wake up, set a timer, five minutes, 10 minutes, you choose and just sit mm. and just sit and let the stuff come. And it's going to be uncomfortable, but we're doing it together and it's okay. And then you word dump, you write, you write all the things. And this may be beautiful poetry, or it's most likely going to be like word vomit. It doesn't have to be anything for anyone but you. Because in this is where we start to get some clarity. Mm. So so sit for five minutes, be with your own thoughts, um, write down um, what's coming to you, either maybe it's like you said it's poetry maybe it's just the, this this word vomit but your suggestion is that you know people start with five women start with five minutes um pick up this book and now let's say that they begin to um incorporate this habit and at some point i do want to get back to how you adjust your 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 lime and mold um they incorporate this habit what's the next phase of this journey yeah, so I would love to talk about there's five phases to this self-synchronization process okay. that I teach. And to me, this is a really important part of the puzzle. So we're going to talk about like the biohacks that I use to get myself better, which is really, really important because I wouldn't have even had the mental capacity to step into these tools. Right. Right. It's like I needed to get in my chamber. I needed to decrease inflammation in my brain. I needed to run some labs. I needed to take some supplements. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even think straight. Wow. Then I could pivot into these self-care tools. Right. But I know for me and a lot of women that had I been incorporating these from day one, I probably wouldn't have gotten as sick as I got. Right. So this isn't like an either or conversation. This is a both and. I think, you know, I, I love the point that you're making there. And I really want to highlight it for the for, you know, the listeners, because. The, you're right about the bucket filling up and we we understand things like sleep um, and and, you know, poor diet and things like this. But but we don't really realize the impact um, of these micro stresses that that eventually fill this bucket up. And essentially what they're doing is when you're in a stress state, when you spend a, a lot of time in a sympathetic state is it has a negative effect on the immune system. Oh, and yeah. so when you run the immune system down, um, you know, other pathogens that it may have been able to ward off, um, it's now allowing to slip through and to, and to grow, which to your point is very likely what happened in your situation. Um, you know, you, you're physically stressing your body at, um, you know, CrossFit, you're emotionally stressing your body because you've got all of these patients that are relying on you for their journey. And then you're, um, you know, spiritually stressing your body because you're, you, you're, you have commitment to your husband, you got a commitment to your kids. You have all these people that are in the front seat that you're really trying to help propel. And it's no one thing. And I think sometimes when people stay, take a step back and they look at their life, they're like, well, I actually have a good relationship with my spouse and really love my kids and I exercise and I eat well, but not really looking at, um, well, what are you doing for yourself? Yeah, right? yeah <laughs> like, absolutely. I mean, um, you think about it, but I think everybody is really busy. Everybody has a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And when you add kids to that puzzle mm -hmm. as beautiful, like I am, I'm a person that was born wanting to be a mom. Like I am so in love, obviously, and obsessed with my children. Mm -hmm. And even just a morning like this morning, like you can very easily get pulled into a state of fight or flight. Like it is very tricky to get into a flow state. Right. So we're getting them ready for school. We're getting ready to come here for the podcast. Yeah, It's like, I've heard you talk about on one of your podcasts, you know, ADD is like having multiple tabs open. Yeah. So as a mother, overload disorder, yeah. as a mother or as a busy woman juggling a lot of things, whether you have children or not, you have to have multiple tabs open. Right. I'm going from the kitchen to my bedroom to grab something that I need for getting out the door. And there's five things that happen on the way. Right. right. So you're constant. Your immune system is constantly bombarded because you're constantly in the state of fight or flight. 
to your point. And so if we're not taking those daily dips, then that can accumulate. And I think something that's really important to mention here is that, you know, we can't live in a bubble, mm -hmm. right? So whether it's mold or toxins in the environment or air fresheners and fragment, fragment, Pregnances. I can't yeah, fragrances. Say, I can't even say the word because we avoid them <laughs> at all costs. Febreze fragrances. Febreze. The, yeah. the pine sole things that hang <laughs> in the, the Ubers. Worst. Yeah, the worst. <laughs> um, but we also, there's a place for like being able to handle it. And I think that's where the magic comes from. And that's what I want to help women do because we can't control our external worlds. We can only control the internal. So, so I want to get back to these five steps. So um, five minutes with a book, journaling. Um, and let's let's move through these these other um, five phases because I, I, I you coined a term um, in your bio. I forget what it was. It wasn't biohacking, self self synchronization, self synchronization. Yeah. So self hacking, self synchronization. I I I'm, I like the sound of that word. Mm -hmm. um, so you know it, it starts with the baby steps of five minutes to yourself and yeah. and choosing a um, a book that's going to empower you, not just distract you and some journaling and then how where do they progress from there so that would be what i call the self sync step so first we sit with the self right so the book is the tool for that then it's the shadow sync so the shadow is the word that i like to use for what we as women might call negative emotions or bad feelings and we have become like dangerously good at avoiding these feelings anger shame guilt sadness jealousy and there is so much magic in these feelings. So the second step, the shadow sink, is all about simply realizing the power of these and giving yourself permission to sit in them longer. What if instead of feeling angry and distracting ourselves out of it, like I used to do this all the time, I'd be mad and I'm like, oh my God, why am I mad? I gotta go for a run, I'm like flip this so I'm good for my day. Rather than realizing that in my anger lies my greatest power. Mm. I could go like crush leg day at anatomy. <laughs> Those are my best workouts. Yeah. I got one across the street. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. We, my workout buddies here in, yeah. the, in the background. Um, so anger is power. Mm. What if sadness we saw as our creativity? Mm. Think about your favorite pieces of art that you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Or some of the songs that we all love, especially love songs. Right. Those come from sadness. Right. So the artist writing those had to feel that feeling. Like that is beautiful art. Mm. What if jealousy, this is a big one for us ladies. What if jealousy wasn't something that we shoved in and tucked away because it's such an ugly feeling, especially if we feel it about our girlfriends. Right. What if we saw jealousy as a roadmap for what we want in our lives? Mm. And what if we sat with it long enough to figure out what is it that she wants that I can have? Yeah. Like jealousy is simply desire without action. Wow. It's, I want that, and I haven't yet been willing to take the steps to get so it. So kind of reframing it. You yeah, know? reframing uh, it. You know, I, I, I saw a, a Sadhguru the other day, um, a talk that he did, and this um, this mother, it was a very painful moment in her life, um, had lost her, her daughter, and she was just over, so overcome with sadness. And it had been years since her daughter passed away. And she said she woke with it every day. She went to bed with it every day. It was like a lead backpack that she wore. And she couldn't, she she just couldn't get this heaviness and sadness. And and what he did, it was really interesting. He reframed it by, by talking to her that if you want to honor her legacy, you don't want her legacy to remind you of sadness. You want her to remind you of joy. What is the best thing you could do for her mm. in after her passing is you could celebrate the life and time that you had with her. And um, and he just talked about reframing that emotional state to say, um, you know, you can you can sort of loud over the loss yeah. or you can rejoice over the time that you had. And then every time something good happens in your life, you can think about your daughter and how she would have reacted in that moment or, or that she's actually there with you. And you saw this like reframing of that emotional state. So is mm -hmm. that what you're talking about is like tapping into those emotions and, and kind of reframing it? Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's such a beautiful story and reframing is so powerful. And, you know, that's a really good story to share because reframing doesn't necessarily mean it's going to feel good. Like I went through some major sadness and grief last week and it was ugly. Right. But the difference in 
what happens now since I've reframed it is I feel it. I used to never let myself feel it and I learn a lot from it. I learn a lot about like, why is this coming up for me? What is this really about? Right. And then it's about doing the work, right? Because right. Because triggers on the outside that make us angry or make us sad or make us jealous, that's all about stuff that we've carried in here, right? right. It's very rarely about the actual moment. So when they're, they're when they're engaging in this practice, you know, starting with a book, the journaling, and now they're looking at the, this um, shadowing, as you call it, um, when they... When when they're experiencing that emotional state, what are you suggesting they do with that state, with that emotion? Yeah, there. I mean, there's a lot there. I have people that I rely on for sure. Mm -hmm. Like that's when I tap into like a life coach. I mm -hmm. call my girlfriends. Thank God I have some incredible girlfriends. Right. Um, I also tap into something I call the connection code. This is on my site. We can link it as well. But there's mm -hmm. five different things that I'll do. Uh, I'll either focus on doing something to get into my body and out of my head, right? Mm -hmm. So what are things that I can do or women can do to get into their body? We can put on music, we can dance, mm -hmm. we can move, we can do yoga. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of them. I'll get into my heart. So what gets us into our heart? Sometimes great breath work. Like this morning you were yeah. doing your breath work. That'll get yes. you in your heart. I'll get out into the world, right? Get me out of my home. Get me off my com computer. Get me off digital. Get me outside in the mm -hmm. environment. Gosh, that's so powerful, just that. Yeah. It's the most overlooked thing, I think, in all nature. psychiatric care. Nature. <laughs> just, just getting outside yeah. of nature. Yeah. I read this quote the other day. It was like, when we feel disconnected from nature, it's really we're disconnected from ourselves because right. we are nature. I love yeah. that. So true. The other one is maybe learn a new skill. Like mm -hmm. there's so much power in like vitamin of information. Mm -hmm. Um, and, that, and for me, that's skateboarding lately. Like I, I'm not good <laughs> really? at skateboarding, but I love playing on a skateboard. Oh God, this sounds dangerous. That, <laughs> that will get me out of my head. Like yeah. I have got to focus when I'm playing on the skateboard. And the last one is connection with the divine. So I'll basically be like, what is it that I need right now? And I'll tap into one of those or phone a friend. Okay. Yeah. And so now moving through these other five phases, mm -hmm. we're at phase three. Phase three. Um, this is a, this is a really, really important one. The other two are pretty quick, but phase three is uh, cycle sync. So I've heard you talk a lot on your podcast about getting back to basics, mm -hmm. right? So for women, it's living in accordance with our cycle. Mm. So our body has this incredible, magical... Yeah, my wife has an app. Oh, so yeah. she warns me when it's coming. Yeah. I'm like, well, so here's the thing. This <laughs> like, is what's can we sync really... that to my phone? <laughs> so, I'm, so I know. So, <laughs> so this I know is, when we're approaching the red zone. This is really good information for you because you're going to yeah. be able to help support her. So the Great. men that are listening to this, take your notes, write this down. This is huge. Mm -hmm. So... You know, as women, we're designed, it's not an accident, right? What happens with our hormones? They're mm -hmm. designed for it. We've just gotten disconnected from it. Right. So leading up to our cycle, we have a drop of progesterone, estrogen, our neurotransmitters drop, our all of our feel-good chemicals, our dopamine, our serotonin. So basically all of our protective armor is down. Mm. So first of all, when you're with your wife, just just think of that, right? Like she is emotionally naked and vulnerable leading up to her period. Mm. So what I always like to, you know, as a chiropractor, my lens is always like, why were we designed this way? So why would women be, de be designed this way? Well, if you look back at, at indigenous cultures, what would happen during those times? Well, women, one, were all synced up to the lunar cycle because we didn't have all the lights that you mm -hmm. talk about all the time. We didn't yeah. have blue light and white light, and we were all in sync. And these women were removed from society. They weren't outcasted. Right. They were invited to stop their duties, stop their responsibilities, because the communities knew the power of these women gathering together and taking time to go inward. Mm. This was the most intuitive time for women to gather and create solutions for problems and challenges within the culture. So the most intuitive time for them is during this emotional vulnerable state prior to their menstrual prior cycle to our starting. Cycle. How yep. far out prior from the to menstrual and starting? Cycle? I think it's there's other experts. Dr. Mindy Peltz. Right. I don't know if you've had her on here. She nails to, this yeah. stuff. Oh, so good. So that would be a great question for mm. her. But I would say about five to eight days leading up. Okay. Okay, so how do we apply this to real world? Because you're not going to send your wife in the red tent with her friends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we probably have podcasts to be on and right. patients to see and right? But how can we take that information and live in accordance to that? Well, if we're talking about biohacks, like this is not the time to push the ice bath. This is not the time to push the sauna. Use it, right? But this isn't like the... I know we had Streams, a conversation yeah. before the podcast anyway. It's not more is better anyway, but especially during and leading up to your period. Okay. This is a time to nurture. This is a time for slow tune in. 
for me, this is when I absolutely get in my hyperbaric chamber. Mm. This is when I'm spending a lot of time on the PMF mat. Mm -hmm. This is when, uh, if I'm going to binge LIB, it's love is blind. Yeah, love is blind. For all those. <laughs> <laughs> all those ladies out there, I know you binge watch. It's total trash and it's so good. <laughs> this, <laughs> it's total trash. It is a so train good. wreck of a show. Well, we just got off the spiritual bandwagon mm. and went right down. Yeah, that well, let's hole. be real. Let's yeah. be real. Um, this is when I'm going to watch. If I'm going to watch something on Netflix, this is that time. Okay. If I can carve out time for a massage, it's the week before my period. Really? If okay. I'm going to get my hair done, it's the week before my period. This is when, like, can someone take care of you? Mm. Can we carve out the space? And the last thing on that is, you know, even just a reframe. This is not a time for outward energy. This is a time for inward. So mm. if you've got a big day, a big job, like my hairdresser once, she was like, I'm sorry, I'm not feeling super chatty. I'm leading up to my period. All she had, I mean, I was like, of course, please. I was not expecting that of you. Right. We can reframe, like, I don't need to talk a lot. Today can be a day where I listen. Right. Today can be a day where I'm present. Just setting your intention and giving yourself permission to tune into that. Right. The last two, real quick. Okay. Spirited sync. This one's really, really fun. Spirited sync. Spirited okay. sync. So this is getting back to your spirit. This is getting back to what did you like to do as a child? The key to all these is when we have this information, again, these aren't like appointments that we have to take. This is mm -hmm. like a reframe and things that we can tap into almost at any time throughout our day. Mm -hmm. So what did you like to do as a kid? I like to get on my bike. I like to spend time outside. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend loved to tap dance. So yeah. how can we incorporate that into our daily lives? Mm. She went on Amazon, got her got herself a pair of tap shoes, and in between her Zoom really? meetings, she taps for two minutes. That's so awesome. <laughs> my wife's been really um, intentional about getting back into dance lately. She she actually texted me this 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 morning about. Um, how how dancing? Uh, they, there was a study that came out on the on the impact of exercise being actually better than SSRIs. Um, if I can find the study, I'll, I'll actually put it in the show notes. And um, that the serotonin uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors did not have as much of a uh, positive outcome as as exercise, and specifically that dance mom had the greatest effect on these dopamine levels and and actually shifting a state of depression more so than um you know more so than these these SSRIs and uh, and so she just, literally just texted me that this morning so she's definitely going Yay, back and gonna start dancing <laughs> say, say, she's gonna dance it's so she's not good. depressed but I mean she's just no. gonna dance her way into a state of really healthy well it gets you out of your head and into your heart and into your body right so I did something similar I would call these macro self cares right okay. macro self care would be going to the dance class right micro self care if you have like a quick two minutes it's putting on music at your house and like mm. shimming your hips in between phone calls right. So I was a gymnast growing up and mm. I loved gymnastics. And when I was 11 years old, I made team and I was really shy. And so I quit. I quit before competition. Mm. And when I started asking myself, what did I like to do as a kid? That was like the deep, deep one that I was like, God, I love gymnastics, but I could never yeah. get back. I had a screw it moment. And last year I was like, why can't I get back? <laughs> so I called, <laughs> I called our kids gymnasium. Your wife's a daredevil over here, like <laughs> skateboarding, gymnastics. <laughs> it's all about getting in flow. Yeah. Um, so I called our kids gymnastics studio and I asked if they would coach me and they said, come tomorrow. So at the age of 41, mm. I started taking classes and a few months after classes, our kids had a gymnastics competition. Oh, and the boy. coach asked me if he wanted me, if I would compete. No way. <laughs> I competed. Did your kids in, give you the stink eye? In my children's <laughs> gymnastics competition. You know what? They were a little embarrassed. But what I, I watched these girls watch me. I watched these girls watch me at the age of 41 mm -hmm. compete in a gymnastics competition. And all I could think of is I pray that when they're older, they see this and they remember. Ah. Uh. You know, yeah, and like I've so seen powerful. them out in the community and they're like, you're that girl. You're that girl that competed in our competition. Yeah. So the spirit sync is all about getting in flow is really what it is. And we do that by participating in play. Wow. So there's not a lot of time in our day where we're completely present in the moment. Mm. So for women, it might be dance. It might be gymnastics. It might be movement for guys, more of our adrenaline seeking guys like mm -hmm. For my husband, he almost has to be like facing death to be present. Right. <laughs> These hundred foot wave surfers, the reason that they love it is it puts them in the present moment. It puts them in flow. Right. You think about during your day, all the thoughts that you have, 
there's very few times where we're focused on one thing. So the gift of tuning into your spirit and spirit sinking is being present. Wow. That's where you get dopamine. So so being present, finding something that, you know, get back to your why and find something that really feeds you. So let's let's walk through the first four again before we yeah. get to number five. Yeah. Walk us through that again. So self sync, that was sitting with the book as a tool. Book, start five minutes journaling. Yeah, I've got that book club for anyone that wants mm -hmm. a resource. I've got a 31 day challenge. I'll sit with you in the mornings. Um, the next one is shadow sync. So understanding the power of our emotions, sitting with them, phoning a friend, maybe drawing, journaling, getting some of that energy out. Um, the third one is cycle sync, living in in accordance with our cycle as and, women. And the, and the um, just to summarize that, this is like going into your menstrual cycle, the time where you're not pushing yourself too intensely physically, you're not doing the extreme ice baths and saunas and some of the other things. You're sort of um, focusing on... Your nurture nurturing yourself yeah. okay. and there's pieces of that for every part of the cycle i have that on my platform i just figured yeah. we'll touch on it here and and, and i like the idea of of um you know, like i said my 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 wife keeps hers on her on her phone she has an app but I, I like the idea of getting your spouse involved getting the getting the men involved because you know sometimes we're looking from the outside and and we don't we don't identify with the, the fact that you can be three different women in the same month. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and that could be a beautiful thing. You it could know? be an amazing it's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Is... And I think in our society, we've, especially as women, we've started to, to judge that. Yeah. So when our men know that how we feel and what we need leading up to our cycle, mm -hmm. and that's why I think just communication, like I'm very straight up with Jay, I will tell him, this is how I feel and this is what I need from you. That's great. And I think men appreciate that kind of communication. We do. I like, mean, we also would like to know when the libido spikes. Like if we that could would be, be specific ovulation. about that. That would be okay, during good. ovulation. Okay, good. <laughs> if we could make sure that we highlight that. Um. <laughs> it's usually, if you look at your wife, so just real quick, cycle syncing around ovulation, that's when we feel like peacock. <laughs> like when I am in awesome. a social gathering, yeah. I could be like, ovulating not ovulating ovulate because really? the girl that's ovulating is going to be walking in talking all Woo. think about again why would we be designed that way because right. that's when we're fertile we're right. meant to reproduce right from a biological standpoint so oh, when I, you're, I, I love that getting yeah. back in to tune with that cycle and being you know as a harmonious couple sort of in sync with that yeah um, like together. that's when like can you make me coffee and bring it to me in bed like mm -hmm. can i just have a bit more time in the morning to nurture can you get the kids breakfast like that that I think is such a beautiful way to be with our partners. Sure. Yeah. Amazing. And it takes tuning in and listening and knowing how you feel and what you need and then owning it enough to outwardly express it. And then number four. Um, number, number four was spirit sync, yeah. and then number five is simply Here slay sync. So we do all the syncs so we can slay our life. Slay sync. <laughs> and this I is love that. this basically gets us to a place of living the life of our dreams rather than living the life that we feel like we're supposed to. Mm. There's so many shoulds, especially as women, that we put on ourselves. Yeah. I should. I should. I feel bad. I like these words that we say all the time. Yeah. It's so it's so amazing. I, you know, I I. M we spend so much time down the deep rabbit hole of science mm. and less down the deep rabbit hole of experience. Mm. And so I like that this is an experiential way um, to maybe take some of the toxic load off of us because, you know, toxins aren't just environmental pollutants. I mean, toxins are our feelings, um, yeah. their emotional states, um, their burdens, their stresses. And, you know, we can filter our environment for we can filter our water, we can eat organic food, but if we're not actually taking care of the um, emotional, spiritual, um, and, the, and the side of us that actually has, that's you know in touch with ourself, yeah. um, and feeling like it's okay to do that, we're leaving like a third of the bucket unaddressed. 100%. Um, and, and, so, and so I love this journey. I, I wanna circle back around to your journey with, with Lyme. Mm -hmm. um, and after you discovered it, um, you know, I know you glossed over the fact that you have these modalities in your clinic and you started hyperbarics, but what kind of specifically did you do? Because I, I you know, now that I know I live in the mold capital of the world. Um, <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. First We're of all, you'll find air filters in every single room I in the noticed. house. Like I'm yeah, a psycho. I'm you're ozoning the place, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, uh, I think that there is a lot more chronic low-grade viral um, mold and mycotoxin and heavy metal toxicity that is going completely undiagnosed and missed. And 
um, you know, it, and, it, and it doesn't show up in standard labs. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't show up on the gene test that, 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 that I do. And, you know, very often, you know, our clinical team will take someone who looks good on paper, their, their, their labs, um, is perfectly supplementing for their genetic deficiencies. And, and, but anecdotally, they just do not feel good. They're heavy levels of brain fog, like you're saying, chronic fatigue, mm -hmm. loss of libido. Um, they seem to can't get out of the rut. And so it could very well be, you know, what you were facing. So what kind of steps did you take once you identified this enemy? Yeah, I mean, I was really fortunate, right? So I'm a chiropractor and I was literally working in a building that has all the tools mm -hmm. that I required. So I'm very, very fortunate. And I know a lot of people don't have access mm -hmm. to that as easy as I do. They can find access to it. They can yeah. find access. That's true, especially now. I mean, when we were first getting into this 15 years ago and you were well before us, right? But people didn't know about this stuff and you couldn't oh, no. find it. Now it's everywhere. Um, but I also fortunately lived with a functional medicine practitioner. So what did I do? I delved pretty, delved pretty deep into fasting. Mm. Um, I was definitely taking a lot of supplements to help clean out some of the bugs and help support my immune system. When you say delve deep into fasting, what kind of fasting were you doing? So I was doing once a week for me. This is what worked for me. I was doing once a week a 24 hour. Mm -hmm. And I would do that even leading up to getting sick. I was doing that about once a week, like my busiest week in the clinic because I actually feel best when I fast. Um, other days I was doing intermittent and then I changed my fast around my cycle. So leading up to our cycle, uh, there's progesterone balance that needs to occur. So that's when I would have more carbs and cut my fast. Okay. So I would do fasting. Um, hyperbaric oxygen was one of the biggest parts of my, my healing. Yeah. So you would, um, um, how frequently would you do hyperbaric? And for those people that are familiar with hyperbaric, what kind of atmospheric pressure would you use and oxygen would you use? Yep. So I, we have hard chamber in our clinic and we have soft chamber in our clinic and in our home. Um, so I was doing, for the most part, I was doing soft chamber and mild pressure in our home. When you say mild pressure, 1.4 1. 1. 1. 1.3. Okay, so just mm -hmm, right. really, really mild pressure. Yeah. You know, and, and for those of you guys that think that hyperbarics um, for a condition like this are way out of the realm of possibility, you know, our clinical team has in the past been able to, um, there, there, are, there are companies that put leasing agreements in place, yeah. and they will actually, if a, if a practitioner writes you a script, they will deliver a hyperbaric chamber, um, and the, you know, the doctor will give you the script on how to utilize it, um, and then you lease the chamber. So, you know, when you're looking online, you're like, holy cow, these things are 18,000 to, you know, $90,000 if you get really sexy. Um, you might not be out of pocket for all of that for a few hundred bucks a month. I mean, I have a yeah. friend uh, uh, um, out in Pete and Kim out in uh, Colorado and they leased it. And well, that's it nice too, because then it's in your home. Right. Yeah. So for me, you know, you could you can go to a clinic now. So many clinics have them. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. When I was doing it in our home, I could get the kids to bed and then I could spend a couple hours in the chamber. OK. Right. So you're doing hyperbaric chamber, um, uh, fasting, cyclical fasting, fasting, I would call that. And this is full water fasting for 24 hours. Yes. Right. Yeah. And well, I've te I've blood tested. So I'm someone that can have coffee on a fast. So I would have like okay. a little bit of cream, heavy cream and a coffee. Right. Great. Um, my ketones go up and my glucose stays stable. You just made a lot of people really happy. Yeah. Um, oh, and, yeah. Yeah. It's so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, and so you would do a soft hyperbaric chamber session daily. I would aim for about, I think I was doing, Jason was overseeing my care because I couldn't even think straight, but I think I was aiming for about 10 hours a week was my goal. 10 hours a week, wow. And then, because I was doing a couple hours in chunks at home. Mm -hmm. So if I went two hours, you know, five days a week, I hit it. And then okay. once a week in the clinic, I was getting about 1.75. So okay. I was hitting the higher pressure. And talk a little bit about what the hyperbaric does. So, so you know, it obviously increases the atmospheric pressure, but were you also running high um, dose oxygen in there. We 93, so at 95%. home, we didn't have supplemental oxygen in okay. the clinic. We do. So hyperbaric essentially, I mean, again, boil it down to like, what does our body need and what does it run off of? So hyperbaric oxygen is simply oxygen under pressure. Mm -hmm. You know this, but for your audience, uh, and, and according to Boyle's law in science, any pressure, any gas, when we pressurize it, we can absorb more readily. Mm -hmm. Oxygen is one of the number one fuels for the nervous system. So a lot of my symptoms, a lot of what I had going on was nervous system based. I had brain inflammation. Um, I was 
totally inflamed all over my body. Wow. So going in the chamber for someone like me or someone that has those symptoms, it basically is like one of the best anti-inflammatories out there. Yeah. So you're, so you're, you're, you were getting in the hyperbaric, um, what kind of supplementation were you doing? And were you trying to measure your, your ANA titers, your, your IgG, your IgM titers to see if it was having an effect? To see what was happening. Yes. And really, I mean, I took myself out because as a practitioner, I feel like we, I don't know. I feel like I can't doctor myself. Right. So I needed to become a patient. And I also, I was so overwhelmed with like what was going on in my blood. Fortunately, I was able to hand everything over to Jason and just focus on like mentally getting myself better mm. and taking care of my children. Okay. So he was running my labs. He was keeping a close eye on everything. I was taking a lot of stuff to um, like, I think I was taking some parasite stuff. Yeah. Because uh, Lyme hides in all the places. I was definitely doing a lot of immune builders. Um, I was taking methylated vitamins. I know you're big on that. That's yeah, so important. Huge. Um, when you say methylated mm -hmm. vitamins, just to be specific, the B complex, methylcobalamin, yeah. probably methylfolate, yeah. Um, yeah, trimethylglycine, some of these things that actually just help really support healthy methylation. Because I think, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people don't realize that we methylate light metals very easily, but we also methylate heavy metals, meaning we, we actually can rid the body of heavy metals very slowly. Um, but when that methylation cycle is broken, we rid it extremely slow, which is why two people that are exposed to the same level of, let's say, mercury toxicity, one can become toxic mercury and one doesn't have any mercury toxin at, at right. all. Um, so you're, you're working on your methylation, you're working on, you know, you're using hyperbarics, um, you're, um, uh, doing that 10 hours uh, a week. So you're also doing some targeted supplementation. You're also using fasting. I love that, mm -hmm. um, that you're using cyclical fasting and, and anything else that you were doing, were you walking, were you using IV therapy? I was getting some IV in our clinic. I was doing sauna. Right to like really sweat some of that stuff out. Uh, methylene blue is a big one. Huge we were on using as blue. well. In the combination with red light, it really puts it on steroids. Yeah. Um, you know, there's uh, we we do a lot of 10 milligram methylene blue twice a day with red light therapy. And I'll tell you, for for me, I mean, it's like being plugged into an electrical socket. Yeah. Um, and if you do that, if you do the blue, then the red light, and then the hyperbarics, that's like. <laughs> 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 okay, now I need like a hyperbaric. It's the only like thing I don't have level. in my house. So, we can, we can hook get, you up with that one. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> Most of us have a very difficult time meeting our protein needs, and certain protein sources like whey protein and others can be as little as 20% absorbable. This is 99% absorbable, and it has all of the essential amino acids that the body needs to build lean muscle, to recover, to improve our exercise performance, and most importantly, to repair after we have intense exercise. So this is called Perfect Amino by Body Health. It's, like I said, 99% absorbable. It only has two calories. Eventually, the caloric intake has virtually no caloric intake. It will not break a fast. It tastes amazing. You mix it in water. I take this literally every single morning. If you're working out in a fasted state, you have to take a full spectrum amino acid prior to your workout to preserve your lean muscle and make sure that you're recovering properly. And again, it will not break your fast. So the caloric impact is virtually zero. You get all of the full spectrum amino acids. It tastes wonderful. I use it every single day. You can go to bodyhealth.com forward slash ultimate. That's bodyhealth.com forward slash ultimate and look for the perfect aminos. They actually come in capsules if you're on the go or it becomes in several flavors that they make in a powder, which I love. It's flavored with natural um, uh, means of flavoring. So there's no artificial sweeteners in here. So this is one of my absolute favorite products. Give it a try. If you're working out at all, you need a full spectrum amino acid. Go to bodyhealth.com forward slash ultimate. That's bodyhealth.com forward slash ultimate. I love their lab tested products. You can actually see the absorption rate for all of their products. They've got great electrolyte protein combinations. My favorite is the perfect aminos. Bodyhealth.com forward slash ultimate. And now back to the Ultimate Human Podcast. But yeah, um, that, I mean, that was a big part of it. And then... Um, and how, we, how long was this journey for Well, you? thankfully, it was really quick for us because I knew, what, I knew what was going on and we had the tools to treat it. So within a few weeks, I started feeling normal. Wow. You know, but then what happened is we travel a lot for work. 
Um, a lot of times we're doing East Coast, West Coast flights. So I didn't have like the bandwidth to push the limits. So we would travel and I would get sick. Mm. I'd have a Lyme flare. We'd have like a stressful week in the clinic and I would get sick. Right. Um, now, I mean, a couple years later, like you would never know I have Lyme. I think there's some chronic Lyme in my blood, mm -hmm. but I can push the limit. I mean, we travel. I'll take a red eye plane, not healthy, not ideal, and land back on East Coast time and have a full day of work and land in with the kids. And I'm good, right? So I've gotten to a place where I can handle right. I can handle life. And I think that's really, you know, whether we're talking about biohacking, bio-optimization, it's really about changing our external and internal environment. And internal, I know we both feel, is so key because right. – if we're not working on that, none of this stuff on the outside matters. I agree with you. You know, it's I, I think it's a hard concept for a lot of people to realize that, you know, of every DNA strand in your body, about 40 percent of our DNA is viral. Six, only 60 percent of our DNA is human DNA. Crazy? It's crazy. So you think about every time that ladder unzips and rezips. We're silencing all of those viruses. You know, and a lot of what we've seen, um, you know, our, our, our clinics were uh, we were we were wellness clinics when when COVID hit, and um, we were literally faced with shutting the doors because nobody was coming in for blood work. We we would send people to LabCorp for blood work, and 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 people associated LabCorp with COVID, and they they thought, hey, these these lobbies where people are going to get um, COVID tested is not where I'm going to go and get my wellness totally. blood check. Yeah. So we went weeks without adding a new patient. <laughs> We ended up pivoting the clinics to COVID testing clinics, and as such, our clinical team got very good at, um, you know, because we were testing so many thousands of people for COVID, we got really good early on at treating people for COVID and have since gotten really good at long COVID. And one of the things that we see is that, you know, these, these existing viruses that are part of our DNA, you know, uh, you know, mono comes back as Epstein Barr. You didn't really catch Epstein Barr. You've always had it. Um, you know, chicken pox comes back as shingles. You didn't really catch shingles. You've kind of always had it. So, what causes these viral pathogens to really flare is just what you're talking about the bucket getting over, overflowing. Overflow. Yeah. And being able to address physical, emotional, spiritual, and dietary lifestyle, you know, exercise, sleep. Um, you know, it's, as you get deficient in one area, you better be focusing in these other areas. Yeah. Um, and and biohacking is only a portion of that, which I like. I love the fact that you're you're filling these in because you could go years, decades, and the mono you had in eighth grade is pops back it, in. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's in remission for yeah. lack of better words. You know, and you're just IgG positive. You have no IgM antibodies to it, and then all of a sudden you go through a really stressful period, and bang. And it's no, like the mom. double stack because it's probably going to come in a time in your life when you're stressed, spread thin, burn out, yeah, it's the right? Because that's what causes it, and now Ticks you're hit you with when that. you're down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's about doing the stuff that we can on the daily basis. Mm -hmm. You know, I again, I love that you talk so much about getting back to basics and doing the inside work because there's, I feel like there's a few main reasons for that. But one is, you know, who cares if you're getting great sleep? Yeah. Who cares if you're getting in the cold plunge and making dopamine if you hate your life yeah I mean, like who cares if you're miserable yeah. you know what's so funny is <laughs> malia read me that about in your bio this morning <laughs> down by the water and i go i go i love that she says who cares if you're biohacking if you hate your yeah. life i go that's a really good point <laughs> we were both so laughing true. by the but i love uh, that water this morning i love that you know these tools are hitting the masses yeah and I do you're too. a big part of that your conversations you. that you have in here are, are doing both yeah and I love that because I can't even tell you the friends that have called from Ohio, where I'm from, like my friends from high school that are watching what you're doing and they're starting to uh -huh. ask questions. And, you know, your interview with um, Dana White, like mm -hmm. how he's getting dopamine now from an ice plunge instead of whatever the other tools that people used to reach yeah. for. That is a huge step. No question. And then at the same time, I want to challenge people to take it that step further right. because you know, I know we play in some of the same circles and there's these mm -hmm. biohacking conferences popping mm -hmm. up. You could go to one every weekend all right. over the country. Yeah, I just went to an amazing one, yeah. And you walk around these and it's gadgets upon gadgets. It, like if I see another picture on social media of someone with like light helmets <laughs> covering their face <laughs> right. and something on their throat and like trackers up and down their arm, it's like we're just missing this huge piece. Mm -hmm. Like we're just replacing. I'm glad we are because it's getting people from a place of drugs and medicine 
getting to a place of like, okay, let's let's use ice and let's use heat and let's use methylene blue. Mm -hmm. And then all the stuff that you're doing in your life and talking about on here right. is also that next step of like, okay, breath work and meditation and mm -hmm. all the things. I've got my dad and brother watching you. I'm like, you do? Oh, it's going to help because it's not just me <laughs> saying it anymore. Hey, dad. Hey, brother. Yeah. Um, so, so let's just sort of wrap this all up for the audience. Um, what would you say are your um, – let's, let's, let's start with a morning routine, a healthy morning routine, you know, mother of three like yourself – um, probably inherently has a little caregiver syndrome, right? 100%. Kids are first, husbands first, careers first. Hundred percent. Um, what are let's 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 wrap up like a good you know starting morning routine for her, and then I want to I want to wind into what are some of your favorite biohacks that Perfect. you would use outside of that. So let's start with a morning routine. Yes, the morning routine, especially for a natural caregiver woman, whether you're mm -hmm. a mom or not, starts with a reframe. Mm. And I think one of the biggest take homes I want people to get out of this message is it's not selfish and we're no longer required to be selfless. This is about being self with, mm. right? With yourself. So as a mom of three children, I could easily assume that in the morning, if I am choosing to not help my children before myself, that I'm ignoring them or that they feel that I'm ignoring them. So I first needed to start with a really powerful reframe. I'm not ignoring my children. Mm -hmm. I'm not ignoring the emails. I'm not ignoring the phone calls. I'm not ignoring my obligations. I'm take a minute, taking five minutes to be with myself mm -hmm. because then I have a full cup to fill whoever else I'm taking care of. And especially for women with children, we are role modeling for them. Yes. Right? So they my learn morning, more through observation than they are. hundred percent. It's dictation. like, I can't hear what you're saying because I'm watching what you're doing. Or, you know, your actions right. speak so loud. I can't hear what you're saying. So my mornings, I do not go on digital. I do not go on digital and I'm very protective of light sources. Mm. So I call it a magical morning. Yeah. And I create what feels like a wake up lounge. So it's this beautiful, basically the, my ent the entire intention of my morning is to ease into our day. Now, do you have a specific room that you do this in or do you? So we all here? kind of gather like where our couches are in the family room. I've got a red light that I love, that I love, 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 that I turn on. And it's like a little bonfire light. Um, sometimes we'll put like little music on, like ocean waves or sound healing or, you know, really light. And how long music. does that time frame last? I mean, just like you said before, you start with five minutes, but it rolls into half an hour. So if I'm up at 5 a.m., like I get up and I sit in front of my red light, I read my book. I've got like this beautiful night amber light that clicks mm -hmm. on my book. That is my favorite time of the day because that's the only guaranteed time that we can be in that flow state. Right. I'm not going to miss 5, 10, 20 minutes of sleep, right? right? So I encourage women, get out of your bedroom. Be very, very aware of your light. Right. We're in this beautiful dreamlike state. And if you can extend the pleasure of that dreamlike state in the morning, it's going to set your nervous system for the entire day. Mm. So what do I mean by that? White light will pull us out of that beautiful state. Oh, yeah. White light is the – we are in the junk food of lighting in this room, just FYI. But we can handle it. Shame on you, Miles. We can handle my production it. manager. <laughs> um, just feeding me junk food. Straight to so, the dome. So get red light. There's some amazing biohack lights mm -hmm. you know that I love. Yeah, some amazing I, I companies. have them, yeah. They're great. You can also for ten dollars on Amazon. Like I have lamps in our home. My husband will laugh at me at like six o'clock at night. All the lamps. I'm like melatonin time, and they all go to the red light bulb. They go to the red light bulb. <laughs> like our house looks That's like so a brothel awesome. when people yeah. walk by. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so at night and in the morning, it's just red light. No idea what you're talking about. No, no idea. idea yeah, I'm about. sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you don't mm -hmm. have the same thing going. Yeah. Red light district is so maybe maybe the red light district is on to something you know maybe they, <laughs> maybe that's why they're so they got happy. great skin you know <laughs> um, so I love this you know this um, uh, morning routine and and you're also you're even talking about some of your greatest biohacks but um, I, I I also really like that the majority of what you're talking about is free right tapping into yourself journaling giving you know getting yourself um, a book not reading fiction and not not comparing yourself to what's going on on Instagram, but maybe taking a few minutes to yourself to actually read and inspire yourself and, and feed your soul. I mean, I, I I think one of the things that I notice happens and I try to reignite this childlike curiosity in, in my clients is that we lose our intellectual curiosity as we get older. 
um, you know, when we're kids, we're so curious about the world and we're so curious about um, our friends and education on the opposite sex, maybe the same sex. We're just, we have all of these curiosities and we, and we sort of grow and grow and grow and grow and, and, and we have this very visceral happiness. Mm -hmm. And I found that again as an adult because I have a childlike fascination with the human body and, um, and I'm fascinated by the science of bio optimization of you know how, how does disease work how do we treat disease how does you know how do we just you know continue to evolve and become you know more of an ultimate human yeah. um and so for me it's like like this doesn't feel like work right now no no, no. like yeah, this, this you know th i mean this mm -hmm. is my job but it doesn't feel like mm -hmm. work at all you know yeah. this morning we were shooting outside and i'm like thinking to myself i was like just thank you god this is just amazing that this is my journey um you know, we're, we're outside just shooting videos of walking in the in, in the park. And I think when people can tap back into that intellectual curiosity, yeah. like what excites them? What do they want to know more about? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a massive outlet for stress. Oh, 100%. Um, mm -hmm. And so I love this morning routine. Um, so for 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 the audiences who are really tuned, I think, I think my – my, my females are gonna love this. Um, how do they find you? Where do they find out more about you? Um, how can they get your book? Sure. Um, yeah, so they can find me on socials, uh, beinspiredmama.com. Be inspired mama, and she's got the mama mug M -A -M -A. right here. Is it, yeah. Are these your your signature no, mugs? No, but mama I should mug? make one, right? Yeah, look, really I think cute. you just have to put be inspired <laughs> above it, and you got your own. <laughs> I get fifteen percent uh, of those sales. Totally, I'll give you a um, code. Use code Gary. <laughs> <laughs> You'll make ten cents on every company. I'll make ten cents. <laughs> ten cents adds up. Then you can buy some good lights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she got me. Yeah, like what kind of biohackers <laughs> bays in this fluorescent lighting? Yeah. Um, and then I'll share the link. I know we'll share the link. Thanks to mm -hmm. my uh, incredible community, the book club. I call it the best friends book nook because you're literally creating a best friend within yourself. That's great. And in the women going along this path we, with you. So we'll link to that book club. Great. I've got the 31 day free journey that people can go through the challenge to create yep. a magical morning with me. That's free. We'll link that below too. And Beautiful. then I have the Be Inspired Mama podcast. Beautiful. Free fits everybody's budget. And I I, I, I wind down uh, every podcast the same way. I ask the same question. If you watch my podcast, you've been able to cheat. So you mm -hmm. might have prepared for this. But um, what does it mean to you to be the ultimate human? I love or that an question. Uh -huh. An ultimate mm -hmm. human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that question. You know, I love to say when I'm speaking to audiences that anyone can go and do yoga on the beach, right? Anyone can have an incredible breathwork practice on the top of a mountain. But can we do enough inward work by taking just five minutes a day to connect with ourselves so that we can handle the chaos, so that we can do yoga and get to a meditative, meditative state in the middle of whatever our day brings us? And I feel like to me that is becoming the ultimate human and it all starts with that reframe of, going inward and taking this time for ourselves isn't selfish. We no longer need to be selfless as women. This is right. all about being self with. Uh, Dr. Melissa, this was amazing. Um, I'm really excited that we took the time today to, to, to speak to your audience. I, I'm, I'm definitely going to have you back on the podcast at some point in the future. And thank you. Thank you for coming today. And guys, um, as always, that's just science. <laughs>